Hey there, Heather, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Dabby walking you to the final tournament. This is it. The apocalypse, whoa. The final 32 men are in it. We had four tournaments of 32 people. The top eight from each tournament got to move on. So basically, you had to win two matches to get yourself to the final 32. And based on how good you are within the tournament, it's how good your seating is. So we're going to go over the seating right now. So as you can see, Gene Tunney will face Tony Shuko. Gene Tunney won one of his pods. So Gene Tunney won the pod, so he's the one seed. He makes his Tony Shuko, who's number 32. Number 16 is Joe Gans versus Roberto Duran, who is now number 17. Number 8 is Tommy Ryan. He will face number 25, Floyd Patterson. Number 9 is Jack Dempsey. Yes, that's Jack Dempsey, facing Marvin Johnson. In the other, the next subplot, the four seed is Jack Dempsey NP from Ireland, who won his subsection. He faces Barney Ross, number 29. Number 13 is Benny Leonard versus number 20, Luis Manuel Rodriguez. Number 5 is Joe Frazier facing number 28, Bob Montgomery. Number 12 is Sergio Palma taking on Muhammad Ali, number 21. Now, remember, it's how good you got in the tournament. So if you won... Your subsection, you get seats one to four, no matter what, because there are four sections. If you took runner up, you get five to eight. If you were third and four, or fourth, well, if you lost the semifinals, you would be given seats nine to 16. And the rest of the way, 17 to 32, would be determined based on factors. So, anyway, the number two seat is Sam Langford. He'll face number 31, Pete Herman. Yuko Gushigan, number 15, takes on number 18, Joe Louis. Or Joe Lewis, I should say. Joey Maxim is number seven. He takes on Salvador Sanchez, number 26. The 10 23 matchup is Edward Joffra versus Tiger Flowers. The 3 30 matchup is Chris Carlos Monson, who also won his subsection, facing Henry Armstrong. The 14 19 matchup is Willie Peck versus Pernell Whitaker. The 6 27 matchup is Sugar Ray Robinson versus Young Griffel. And the 11 22 matchup is Ava Tell versus Sugar Ray Leonard. All matches will be fused this time. So, what I did was go through how many matches were in each round and then basically gave a round count and all that. So all the first round, second round, and second round matches are 10 rounds. The quarters and semis are 12 rounds, and the finals 15 rounds to a finish. So here we go. The first matchup is the light heavyweight Gene Tunney against another light heavyweight, Tony Shuko. 12 and 2 versus 7 and 2. From the castle... Amy Hayes, your announcer. Dick Flaherty, your referee. Palmer, Hill, and Rubenstein, your judges. Andres Rett, your ringside expert. So Gene Tunney, the Fighting Marine, 12 and 2, from New York City. 6 foot and 186. Light heavyweight star from 1915 to 1928. In real life, he was 82 and 1. With, and three, well, three draws. The World Heavyweight and American Lightweight Heavyweight title. Known for his fights with Jack Dempsey, including the Long Count. Personal history, he went through his first tournament, qualification tournament, beating Pancho Villa and Kid Sherrall before losing Jeff Britton. And then he lost to Benny Leonard, who's also in this tournament, round 32. And then he went through and beat Pancho Villa, Jack Goldswain, Milford Saylor, Carl Tremaine, and Harry Wills to qualify for the for his subsection. His subsection, which was B, he TKO'd Tyrone Everett. He put a decision on Lloyd Marshall that got him to the round 32, this 32-man tournament. Then he decisioned Bob Montgomery, majority decision on Willie Peck, and he killed Sugar Ray Robinson to get this part. On the other side, Tony Shuko, 7-2, light heavyweight from Boston, Massachusetts, 5'11", 168, 1928 to 1944, 91-16-11, decent resume. In Fantasyland, he was 7-2. He lost to Bo Jack, but in second tournament, he beat Fidel LaBarbera, Georgie Hansberg, Cesco Escobar, Steve Hamas, and Cecil Payne to get this far. And then he beat, in the in Section B, yeah, Tournament B, he took on Jiro, he TKO Jiro Watanabe, and decision Rocky Marciano, shocking the world by taking down Marciano to get to the Red 32. He did lose to A. Patel, but basically his spot was already settled. So here we go, first match, here we go. And he is 14 years older than she could have
He is a four to one favorite according to Bucks. Right, so he should be able to win. Now the only time that real life is gonna interfere with my commentary, so I'm just gonna grab some food and do that. I can score him in shoot mode. So I don't know if he'll. It'll probably be a lockout to Penny. Round nine. Remember, this is only 10 rounds. So, yeah. The first video, you'll see the first eight matches. So it'll be round of 32, and then the next video will be the second half of the first round of this tournament. And then, the swallowing of Chuko is going to ruin his chances. The judges vote to run, and here, ladies and gentlemen, is your winner. Mike says it's going to be Chuko. Wow, they said Shuko might have taken the fight late to Tunny. That would be a shocker if he could take down to Tunny. Amy Hayes says that the judges have tallied their scorecards. Here's your decision. Nathan Palmer says 97-94 Shuko. Wow, that's a shocker. Hill of the United States scores about 96-95 for Tunney. Okay, here we go. And Albert Rubenstein says 97-94 for... No way. No freaking way! Tony Shuko by split decision? I'm just stunned. Like everyone else, Tony Shuko wins. Of all freaking people. It's Tony Shuko. How? Ugh. <sighs> Look at the stats. Hmm. I would be remiss. I think it's kind of close myself. All right. So that fight's over. Now we got Battle of the Lightweights. Joe Gans and Roberto Duran. This could be big for Gans and Duran to get to the quarterfinals from the subsection. We are in Baltimore at the Civic Center. Mark Bureau with the principals. Lupe Garcia, your referee. Floyd Walensky and Burke, your judges. Rob Morris, your ringside expert. So Joe Gans, 8-2, lightweight, the old masters they call him. He, he is 5'6", 134, his career from 1891 to 1909, so he's basically 
late 19th century. His biography, 13815, lightweight and welterweight champion. In the universe, he lost to Stanley Ketchum, but then later on he got another chance and took down Jem Driscoll, big one, TKO Tim Callahan, then took down Martin Hart, George Janet, and killed Mickey Toy Bulldog Walker. And in the um, the A subsection, he took a split decision and went over Stanley Ketchell. So he got revenge on Ketchell. He won by DQ against Ken Norton, which was shocking. Then he beat Muhammad Ali by decision, which also was shocking. But Carlos Monson of Argentina took him out in the group semifinals. On the other hand, Roberto Duran, 8-2. Manos de Piedra, hands of stone from Panama. 5'7", He's 142 today. Career from 1968 to 2001. Wow. So look at his record. 103 and 16. Look at this. Super middleweight. Middleweight. Light middleweight. Welterweight and lightweight champions. Part of the Boxing Hall of Fame. Won comeback of the year twice. Had some very good records and all that. One of the greatest lightweights of all time. He beat Mikio Luce before losing the title ever by disqualification in a qualifying tournament. And then he beat Mike Tyson. Regard, Rodrigo Valdez, Julio, Julio Cesar Chavez, Felix Trinidad, and pronounced Sweet Pea Whitaker Whitt by a split decision in the tournament final. Whitaker got another chance and won his thing, so he's still in the tournament. In Group A, he took down Holman Williams and Archie Moore. Well, the win over Archie Moore meant he got to the round 32, but then he got decision by Carlos Monsong. So Monsong, who is the three seed in this tournament, Took down both Duran and Gans. So they have something in common. Here we go. Dance is really improving. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have your decision. So they won 10 rounds, and we're saying that Dan's will win. Wow. Personally, I don't think so. I really want the Rams to win. But let's see who wins. This point says ninety five ninety four. Mm hmm. Ninety five ninety four. Roberto the Brian. Wow, that was close. Ninety five ninety four. I think he has Jacob Rock. The jabs and hooks were there. He did knock down Duran and yet they're not punching at Christina. But I guess the swelling may have hurt him. Our third matchup, welterweight Tommy Ryan versus Floyd Patterson, the light heavyweight. So we'll see what happens. At Richwood Grove, Ed Derry, your announcer, Sam Fure, your referee, Duncan Agnello and Jose Juan Guerra, your judges, Dave Rodman, your ringside expert. So these guys, um, Tommy Ryan, 9 and 1, welterweight. 5'7, 152, from 1887 to 1907, so 20 year career. 88, 4 and 10 in real life, middleweight and welterweight champion, and into the Boxing Hall of Fame. Personally, he was El Perfecto. His tournament phase, he took down John Laurie, Tom Henry, Charles Turner, Frank Slavin, and Bob Fitzsimmons. Big one, Bob Fitzsimmons. And in Group C, he took down Jimmy Crothers by decision, Kaled Ellsworth Webb, getting him into the 32-man tournament, put a majority decision on Young Griffo, a unanimous decision on Edward Joffra, and he TKO'd Jack Dempsey MP. But he got TKO'd by Jack Dempsey MP. The battle of the undefeated. Sorry about that. So anyway, yeah. So Jack Dempsey MP rocked him. Tommy Ryan took second, so that's why he's the eight seed. Anyway, Floyd Patterson, light heavyweight, a legend, six foot one, eighty-two, 1952 to 1972. So he had a twenty-year career too. Fifty-five, eight and one, great resume. He was the first ever heavyweight to lose the title, but gain it back when he beat Edgar Murray Johansson. In Universe Life, he lost to Keith Gallivan. Got another chance the next tournament and made. Good to it. He decisioned Jose Torres. He TKO'd Giorgio Peralta. Decisioned Jose Medel. Majority decision on Jose Naples. And took down Rodrigo Valdez by KO to get this far. And in the in Group D, he beat Keith Holmes and Jack Blackburn by decision, meaning he got to the round of 32, but he got decision by Sam Langford, the guy from Canada. So, here we go.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Person needs something. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your decision. Well, it looks like Patterson being knocked down is not going to help him. And I think that this might be Ryan's fight. I'm actually surprised Ryan won the fight against Vance after being knocked down. So, anything can happen. Here we go. Marty Denkin says... 95-94 Patterson. Wow. Joe Agnello says 96-94 for Ryan. We're going to have another tight match, aren't we? Jose Juan Guerra puts it 97-92 for Ryan. Yeah, yeah, Tommy Ryan. So Tommy Ryan does his job. Well, I can't blame both of for Patterson, but, like, Tommy Ryan, come on. Well, Tommy Ryan by split decision, and I think that was a good decision. The Patterson trainer, because he was there, the knockdown was there. I think Tommy Ryan deserved it. I feel bad for Patterson, but he lost to Sand Life first, so screw him. On to fight number four. It will be Jack Dempsey, the heavyweight against the light heavyweight, Marvin Johnson. We're like, Marvin Johnson? Is he really that good? We're at the Pepsi Coliseum. Jimmy Lennon, your announcer. Jorge Alonso, your referee. Halston. Cal Chulis and Perez, your judges. Mark Samoji, your ring fit expert. So, yeah, so Jack Dempsey, 8 and 1. The Manatha Molar, 6 uh, knockouts. 8 and 1. 6 1, 192 today. Career was from 1914 to 1927. After the long count fight, I think he was done. 65, 6 and 11. World Heavyweight Champion. Look at who he beat. Look at his resume. So he's basically, yeah, the greatest puncher is number seven. First of all, history, he beat Young Sterling, Rocking Kansas, Johnny Wilson, Aaron Pryor, and Mickey Walker. On his way to moving on to the second phase, which is the one of the 32 men battles. And he was in group C. No, D, sorry. Yeah, D. Ethiko Dan Jor Don Jordan, pardon, and Kale Jean Fulmer getting himself into this round of thir this 32 man tournament. But he KO'd Pete Herman. Before shockingly losing to Sam Lankford by decision. And I thought Sam Lankford was going to be taken down by Jack Dempsey. I wouldn't have cared less. Yeah. Pete Herman is still in the tournament too. Well, Marvin Johnson, 7 and 1. Pops, as they call him, from Indianapolis, light heavyweight. 5'10 and a half, 175. Career from 1979, sorry, sorry, to 1987. So he was in the 80s. The WBA and WBC light heavyweight championship, 30, 43 and 6 lifetime. Got the bronze medal in Munich at the 165 pound class. He beat James Kinchin, Spencer Chavez, Hilario Zapata, Ruben Olivares, and Ancelot Wamba to move, to get this far. And then he beat Bob Foster and George Carpaccio, shockingly beating Carpaccio in France to get this far, to automatically get to the round 32. But then he got decision by Jack Dempsey, NP of Ireland. So he had to face Jack Dempsey, USA, this time.
Yeah, I think it's going on Marvin Johnson. I think that's his got him. That's race. One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, seven, eight. eight, 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 eight. Marvin Johnson's got to stay up there and feed the tough crawler. One, One two, two, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, nope, one more rock down and Johnson's done for it. Are we going to see the first line decision? Let's see. Oh, he's staying there. He's staying up. That is the peak, man. Johnson's a little bit of 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 Rochelle Halstern says 188. Oh, come on. I don't want to see the rest. Man, the ring so called expert made it much more poignant for Jack, less point for Marvin Johnson. I think he wanted to give Marvin Johnson a break. So that means that Joe Shuko takes on Roberto Duran, and Tommy Ryan will take on Jack Dempsey. So that should be interesting. The percentage. Oh, yeah, Jack Dempsey deserved it. Look at the punching accuracy on Johnson. It knocked him on twice. All right, so the first part is done. Now we got Jack Dempsey NP, the middleweight, 10 and 0. I think it was heavyweight. He gets the lightweight Barney Ross, 7 and 2. From Marigold Guy Irons in the US, Jack Connor, your announcer. Herbert Earl, the Canadian referee, will do it. Hamada Garcia and Tasaki, your judges. Christopher Munn, your ringside expert. So Jack Dempsey NP from Ireland. From Kerr in Ireland. 5'8", 150. 10 and 0, 3 knockouts. Middleweight, 1883 to 1895 was his career. 
46 million 10. He was the middle icon. His first and only tournament he qualified, tried to qualify for the tournament. He beat John Sullivan by decision, took down George LeBlanche, Dominic McCaffrey, Young Mitchell, and Charles Turner. And in Regional C, he took down Cuban Black Bill and TKO Jersey Joe Wolcott to get to this tournament in the first place. But then he beat Marvin Johnson by majority decision. Yuko Goshikin, Goshikin by decision, and TKO Tommy Ryan just to get this far. Well, to get to one of the top four seeds, which was the number four seed. On the other side, you got Barney Ross, the pride of the ghetto. Seven and two, three knockouts from Chicago. Five, seven, 141 pounds. His career from 1929 to 1938, so he was the start of the Depression era. He was 74, four and three. World welterweight, junior welterweight, and lightweight champion. He lost to Tony Kennesari in his first attempt to qualify for from the 128-man thing. Buddy beat Carol Size, Leo Lomsky, Charlie Belanger, Baby Arismondi, and George Godfrey to get this far. He TKO'd Tommy West and decisioned Freddie Little in Group C in the little pod system just to get this far. To the third huge man tournament, but he got decision by Gushikin, who then got taken out by Mr. Jerry Dempsey MP. So, this is amazing. Marty Russ has not fought outside of Chicago. Let's show you. There's a gash under his eye for Dempsey and Pete, but he's crushing Ross. I break me the fight. And there were 10 rounds for the first round, first two fights.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have your decision. No. The close dash, and it looks like this is too close to call. Maybe it's Ross, maybe it's Dempsey. Who knows? Or Dempsey MP, not Dempsey from America. Gotta remember, there's a difference. Well, 97 94 from Ross. Ruben Garcia says 96 95 for Dempsey MP. Wonder who the thir th third judge was from Japan. Kasaki san says even. Ay, 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 we have a draw. Who deserved it? I ain't say this, but I think it was Ross who deserved it. Man, now they gotta go for a rematch. Ah. Uh. From Miracle Gardens. Well, I'm not gonna comment. And ah, uh, you have gotta be kidding. Morning Ross fans around the world are gonna be pissed off, and so they should. Dempsey wins the tiebreaker, the draw after that by TKO. So Dempsey MP is eleven and zero. He keeps his undefeated streak alive. And Barney Ross had nothing for him. I guess the rematch was hurtful. Fight 7 has Benny Leonard, the lightweight, against the welterweight Luis Manuel Rodriguez. From Sunnyside Gardens in the States, Henry Jones, your announcer. John Coyle, your referee. Jones, Yoshida, and Earl. Look at it. Made the judges. Richard Plunkett, your ringside expert. So Benny Leonard, the ghetto wizard. What is it about the ghetto? Lightweight. He is career from 1911 to 1932. 5'5", five, five, 150. Yeah, 20 plus years. 183, 18, and 12 for a lightweight title holder. Benny Leonard actually once owned an AHL franchise. He was the owner of the Philadelphia Quakers when Philadelphia got the team from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh used to play in the NHL in the next, late 20s for about four seasons, and then went to Philadelphia. They had a shitty record, 4 and 30, if memory serves me right. And then basically, they fell off the face of the earth. Here's history he beat Tommy Gibbons before being DQ'd against Jack Hare. He got to the semis in a second tournament, taking down Philadelphia, Jack O'Brien, Mike Gibbons, and Sam McVay before being decisioned by Tommy Gibbons. So, at 4 and 2, he had one more tournament left. He beat Jimmy Tunney by decision. He T killed Sam McVay, second time. He got Bob Turner by KO. He T killed Laszlo Pop, the great Hungarian, and majority decision on Jimmy Wilde to get that far. And then in the group, the group D, he beat Fabrice Tiasso and Ricardo Lopez by decision, so knocking them out and putting himself in the 32-man tournament, no matter what happened. And then he decisioned Joe Lewis, which was shocking. But he got killed by a smoking Joe Frazier, so that wasn't good. You got the Cuban, Luis Manuel Rodriguez, Alfeo, on fire, I think. Or, no, sorry, the Lion, I think he is, because Alfeo looks like Leo. 5'8", 156. He's welterweight from 1956 to 1972 in real life. 107 and 13, welterweight champion in WBC and WBA, but of course Cuba was under communist rule. 7 and 1, he beat Antonio Cervantes, Isimatsu Suzuki, Alton Coulter, Maurice Cohen, and Emil Griffith to get to the 128-man battle royal. And then in pairing C, he took down Gustav Schultz and Larry Holmes by majority decision. Larry Holmes started at 0 and 6. He had to win five straight in the one tournament to get this far, to get to the 128 man thing. Then he won the, his first round match, but lost the second. And then he got, and then Rodriguez got killed by Edgar Jopra. So that's why he has such a bad uh, seat.
Knockout, it's Luis Benoit Rodriguez. What a win! Benny Leonard, I thought, was gonna win this one, but nope. Next fight is Joe Frazier, the heavyweight against the lightweight Bob Montgomery, 91 versus 10 and 3. From the Metropolitan Opera House. Uh, opera? Real? Henry Jones, your announcer, Betty Barry Yates, your referee, Manuel Oliver Palermo, your judges, Tommy Kasmarek, and Hans Larson. With Dave Broadman, your main expert. Why would you have it in front in an opera house like Buck? Sorry. Joe Frazier, 9-1 with five knockouts. Buck and Joe Frazier from Philadelphia, by way, South Carolina. 5'11", 210 pounds. Well, 5'11", that's my height. 1965 to 1981, he was a fighter. 32-4-1, heavyweight champion. Unfortunately, he's known for, well, he's known for beating Muhammad Ali by decision. And being taken out by George Foreman. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Obviously, I can't do the Harold Cosell voice and all that. I could if I wanted to. Anyway, he beat Wilfred Benitez in his first tournament. Then beat Bruno Akari, Marvin Hagler, Tyrone Everett, and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad to get this far. And then in subsection D, he decisioned Tommy Gibbons. He decisioned Tommy Longwin. He decisioned... Sugar Ray Leonard. He KO'd Benny Leonard. And then in the tournament final, in the group final, he got TKO'd by Sam Langford, which was shocking. Go, it was the battle of the nine and O's. That one was going to be 10 and 0, but it wasn't pretty sure. It was Sam Langford. Anyway, Bob Montgomery, Bobcat Bob, from Philadelphia as well. By way, South Carolina, just like Joe Frazier, lightweight, 5'8, 135. His career from 1938 to 1950. 75, 19, and 3. He wasn't really that big. He lost to Bo Jack in a qualifier. And then his next qualifier, he beat Alabama Kid. He beat Bo Jack, got a revenge back. Kale Joe Brown. And then in the semis, he lost to Tiger Jack Fox. He was 3 and 2. He was in deep trouble. His next tournament, he beat Johnny Cesaro and Jimmy Slade, meaning that he couldn't lose again or else he'd be retired, quote unquote. He beat Kale Paul Pender. He put a decision on Tommaso Colosso. And a majority decision on Jake Lamada. Big win for him. He got into the Group B in the 128 man tournament. He put a majority decision on Buster Mathis and a big decision on Moon Sun Kill, taking the Korean now and qualifying for this round of 32 no matter what. But he got a decision by Gene Tunney, so just wasn't good for him. Massive, but Tony Shuko versus Roberto Duran, Tommy Ryan versus Jack Dempsey, Dempsey NP faces Luis Manuel Rodriguez. So we have an Ireland Q match, and then one at least one foreign born fighter will get to the quarterfinals. There, there are only been 10, there are only 10 foreign born boxers in the round of 32, in the final 32, which isn't bad. 10. It was even to the bottom, but it was even more worse with the ratio, but no, it wasn't.
Seven. Razor's got some spelling. He's got some work to do on the Montgomery. Raging swelling, man. I wonder if Jesus is going to come down there. Who knows? The right lives are really the huge. Square parts say it's going to be Montgomery. Well, if that's falling, I would probably say, yeah. Well, let's see. Let's see. Let us see. Federal Over says 95-94, Frazier. Okay. Battle of America for Frazier Montgomery. Tommy Kaczmarek says 95-94 for Montgomery. Okay. Close one here. And let's see what Larson says. 95-94 for Frazier? No! Bob Montgomery with a big win over Frazier. Well, that giant swelling. That swelling, I think, ruined it. And... Montgomery sends Frazier flying. Wow. I didn't expect that. So, Frazier shocked by Bob Montgomery. That's a shocker. Well, look at how many punches landed. 125. Montgomery threw 126 hooks and crosses that connected. Frazier only punched 125 times. That's what happens. You can't do that. I don't know why Frazier didn't do it. Doing the job. But now we got ourselves Sergio Palma, the junior featherweight, and the heavyweight Muhammad Ali, the greatest. Well, Sergio Palma seems to be the greatest from Argentina. So we would have actually seen a Frazier Ali fight. We could have seen Frazier Ali in the second round of this tournament. Man, can you believe the ratings for that? But we won't. Bob Montgomery will be waiting for whoever wins this one. From Louisville Gardens. Well, Muhammad Ali's from. Louisville. Louis B. Contreras, your announcer. Ricardo Lobo, your referee. Harold Barnes, Hisatoshi Miyazaki, and Steve Waltman, your judges. Danny Callahan, your ringside expert. So you got yourself Sergio Palma, the junior featherweight from Argentina. La Tigra, 1975 to 1990. Not much is known for him. 52, 5 and 5. I thought Sergio Palma was a film director, but I guess not. Super bantamweight champion. History-wise, he beat Hilary Zapata and Pal Chom Pal, Park Chom Pal, pardon, before being killed by Don Curry. And then he got another chance at another tournament years later. He beat Matthew Sub Muhammad, took down Barry McWiggin, Chang Chung Ko, Ken Buchanan, and Alberto Sandoval to get this far. And then in Group A, in the small group, he beat Jeff Finish and Hank Griffin. To get to the 32-man tournament, no matter what, decision Henry Armstrong before being majority decision by Jody Ma Joey Maxim. In the meantime, Muhammad Ali, the greatest, as they call him, 10-3 in this fantasy world, four knockouts, 
221 pounds today. 1960 to 1981 was his career. 56 and 5. Super heavyweight champion. I believe he won the 1960 gold medal at the Olympics. Meaning the Polish guy. And then threw the gold medal into the river because he couldn't get loaded in Louisville because of segregation. Anyway, he beat Kalasai Galaxy and Curtis Parker in his first few matches in his first qualifying tournament, but before Salvador Sanchez decisioned him. He beat Edward Jaffa by TO before losing to Willie Pep by majority decision in his second chance. And then in his last chance, he beat Alex Aguaro, Victor Galendis, John Stracy, Antonio Cervantes, and Jimmy Young to get to the 128 man thing. And in the first tournament group, he beat Packy McFarland and Tiki Terry McGovern to get this far to the 32 man battle. Unfortunately, he got decisioned by Joe Gons. So that's not good. Uh, there is a time constraint here, unfortunately, because I have other things, I have something to do in the meantime, so we're going to probably cut away from it. I feel bad, but we have to cut away from it. So we will have a time constraint. Unfortunately, I have things to do, so wait. We finish up, and Ali won my unanimous decision. So I feel bad for Palma, but you knew Ali was going to do it. So Ali wins by unanimous decision, and I think it was close. But the punching accuracy was just not Palma's. So Muhammad Ali wins. And that's the first half of round one. Next video, the second half. Anyway, thanks for watching. I do.